Hello, I'm Dan Koenig, Senior Strategist for Life Science at Argos Multilingual. Welcome to the second in a series of webcasts introducing the pillars of centralization and how they can be used to build a successful content strategy for your organization. Today, we will be focused on steps to help you build the second pillar, quality at source. Having used the first pillar to create a common language, what methods can now be created and enforced to ensure it remains a consistent and living language that will ultimately reach and benefit your customers? Let's continue building. Diversity in the natural world is awe-inspiring and beautiful. Conversely, random and uncontrolled variability in technical documentation can create waste and potential confusion that has a negative impact on every phase of your process. This waste increases every time you must rewrite, retranslate, or even scrap published material altogether. The good news is that you have already taken the first giant step by agreeing to a common organizational language. And there's more good news. Doing the heavy lifting up front will remove variability right out of the gate and continue to pay dividends throughout your centralized process. It's time to review the materials on hand. What processes exist in the authoring, publishing, and distribution of your content to maintain your common language and create quality at source? Let's start with the foundation. From your marketing to your software, to your IFU, to your website, is the product name the same? Do you call the hardware components and features by the same names from design documentation on through marketing all the way to the final customer deliverables? Do you have a style guide? Does it cover translated content as well as source content? Is it being used consistently in every content creation hub in your company? Do you actively manage your terminology? For global enterprises that distribute content in multiple languages, terminology management is vital to convey information accurately, maintain corporate identity, and to minimize translation costs and expensive rework. From concept through final delivery to your customers, control of your terminology in all the languages you provide should be an integral part of your product lifecycle management. Ideally, terminology management is an activity that occurs prior to authoring and translation. In my experience, terminology management will require some allowance for varying domains and disciplines, but not to the degree you and your warring kingdoms may expect or insist upon. The goal is to accentuate the majority of terms that are common use and to minimize those that are specialized to quickly identify and create common use terms then to take all necessary steps to enforce their use. This can be done through distributed lists or better yet through software-driven automation. Truly unique terms, for example, those created for use in clinical trials, can also be identified for special handling within your process and or terminology management application. Again, these should be the exceptions, not the rule. Having done the hard work required to create and sustain your terminology process, have you instituted a structured process to ensure content creation is consistent in your source material? Have you deployed authoring tools that help to enforce your official terminology in your source languages? It should come as no surprise that a structured authoring process with its standardized syntax and word choices also makes translation more cost-effective. Some studies show reduction of text volume up to 20%, reducing both IFU page counts and translatable content, with cost savings up to 40% from just this approach alone. There is a lot of emphasis placed on reuse of translated information, and rightly so. But what about reuse of your source material? Are you taking advantage of content management tools to reuse content with differing products when it makes sense to do so? For example, many of these systems allow for reuse of content by simply tagging varying product names and substituting them into preset text. This one feature can provide automated substitution, consistency, and schedule compression all rolled into one. These tools offer another clear avenue to translation cost reduction while increasing intelligibility and consistency in your content. They are a self-sustaining and ever-increasing information pool 
that provides heightened comprehension for translators working on your content and enhanced clarity in the final deliverable to your customers. Don't forget to tell your boss all about it. Have you validated and standardized your numerical content and acronyms by language or region? How about your date and time formats? Have you standardized the units of measure in your source content and all the target languages into which it is translated? Again, from personal experience, it would be difficult to quantify the time and money wasted over the years, arguing over and redoing these fundamental content building blocks. Do you create new glossaries as required for disciplines and product lines in your organization requiring truly unique terms? Where relevant, are they used for software screen creation and reused in corresponding IFU translation for the same product lines? No offense to software developers, but do you involve your technical writers during development to ensure that your on-screen information has human usable language? I recall vividly having a software screen reviewer ask me, what language is this anyway, Klingon? Do you or your translation vendor have tools to extract and ensure concordance of on-screen terms that will also be referenced in your device IFU? Do you have special formatting or tagging that makes clear to the customer when you are referencing a software command or other important software element in your IFUs? Are the rules for these special tags or formatting established across all languages? Do you add these terms to your database as they are identified and translated to ensure consistency in future projects? Does your translation vendor have automation to assist you with this process? Having quality at source is a heavy pillar indeed, with many pieces to construct, but we're almost there. Do you manage your translation memory content, cleansing outdated or erroneous data and substituting updated terminology and approved translations? This is an ongoing task to ensure that this valuable intellectual property is always up to date and accurate. Have you built a localization process that scrubs this content organically as it passes through the various production gates? Have you instituted scheduled and formal cleansing on a periodic basis as well? What about your system semantic layer? Are your metadata and document naming conventions, another form of language, consistent when readying your publications for your website and other forms of distribution? Can your internal and external customers follow a consistent and logical search routine to find the information they need? If you offer your web information in multiple languages, is this effort well managed to ensure consistent use of search terminology and translation of document titles or other identifiers? In closing, it is important to realize this second pillar with its emphasis on source content quality will not only help with your near-term content strategy, it will actually facilitate your journey toward machine translation and the use of artificial intelligence. AI is a technology earthquake that promises to disrupt your content supply chain in ways that can scarcely be imagined. Let me say with great certainty, your well-managed content will be used in the future to train this next generation of automation to deliver higher quality in tighter timeframes at reduced cost. The time to start building toward this goal is now. Thank you for your time and attention today. I hope you'll join us for the third webcast in the Pillars of Centralization series when we will be discussing the importance of using the same tools and materials. See you then.